Hi, it's James Mitchell. Welcome to this video on Workshop Software. Really hope you like it and get some great value. Thanks for watching. Hello, welcome to this video on the quick start training series for workshop software. In this one, we get into the nitty gritty of running workshop software and we're gonna show you right through the workflow. So that's from bookings to how to do jobs, your job center, adding parts and doing cash sales as well. So we're gonna jump into the nuts and bolts of what you guys are gonna do on a day to day basis. So this is a really important video. Watch it right through to the end. There's some really cool tips and tricks along the way and let's jump straight in there and get into it. So first up, what we're presented with is when you log into Workshop Software, you're presented with a dashboard. So this dashboard gives you some really cool information about things like today's sales, the week, the month, you know, how many open jobs and bookings and so on that you have. There's this really cool recent activity as well. So this recent activity shows you what you might have done with uh, invoices and things that have been updated and so on. So you can actually scroll through and, and see, this will go back basically as, as long as you've been doing stuff, but it's got all the transactions in there. You can also see some jobs in progress, which are jobs that are actually got clocked on and the stuff that's been recently completed as well. So you can see that you the jobs that have been recently completed, you can actually double click on them and open them up, for example. So um, the dashboard is a really cool place um, for you to get a whole lot of information about what's going on in your business. And there's also this uh, notification at the top, which will show you um, certain things that we want to let you know about um, uh, you know, in relation to workshop software. So um, that's the dashboard and it's a really cool place to get some great information. So let's jump in now to do your workflow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go off and show you how to first of all search. So if I'm gonna type in ABC, what this has done is this will actually go through and search right across your system. So it searches customers, suppliers, products, vehicles. It'll even search things like invoice numbers. So if I type in an invoice number and 1054 or something to that effect, there you go, there's an, an invoice or, or in this instance, it's gonna be a job number of 1054. So if you wanted to reprint an old invoice, you can just ask the customer for the invoice number as an example and you can open it up and you could reprint it or email it to them or whatever the case might be. So the searching is super, super powerful. So use this to the best of your ability. So let's just go back to ABC. So I've just typed in some of the details. If I want to be a little bit more specific and put a one on there, it's only now going to show vehicles with ABC one in them. And in this instance, it's got the option here of some of these icons. So I can do things like create a booking, create an invoice, send an SMS to this customer or open their uh, latest job. What I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and create a, new, a booking. So I just click on create a booking. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna book it in and let's say I'm gonna book it in for tomorrow for argument's sake. So I can put in a description and in here I can put in what I want done. So I'm just gonna do a service and I'm gonna do a break uh, job that I've already got configured as well. So they're gonna get a break service, they're gonna get their um, discs. Uh, replaced. So I've added in those couple of products. What I can do now is I can go and save this and this is now gone and saved that into a booking for tomorrow's date. So you can leave it literally as simple as that. So you can just put in the date, put in what you want done. You could use a generic labor code, that sort of thing. And that's all you need to do. If you want to get a little bit more sophisticated, you can now jump into the booking diary and what we'll notice is that tomorrow, you'll notice here that there's actually this, this uh, yellowish sort of icon here actually shows you the unapplied time. So these ones are actually mechanics and how full they are. So this guy's about half full, this guy's about three quarters of the way full. So you can see on a day by day basis how full your mechanics are. You can click on the day and you can see that Harry and Bill have got some stuff uh, already allocated to them, but Tony, Bill and Michael haven't got anything allocated to them at all. So if we wanted to, that service that we've got here, we could actually drop this and say that 
Uh, Tony is going to do that to, uh, at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning. And we're also going to get Michael to do the disc brake service maybe when he's finished. So we're going to do that at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. So you can see that you can drag and drop these under particular mechanics uh, times. If you want to, you don't have to do that. It's entirely up to you. But if you want to be quite specific about who's doing what, it's really, really simple. To, and then you get this really great view about how booked up you are and all that sort of stuff. So um, that is a really cool way of managing your bookings and seeing exactly what's going on. The other option is, is you can just use this list. And what the list has got is it shows you uh, what's going on with the various jobs that you've got on. So it just shows them in a, in, in a list. So instead of actually allocating them into individual mechanics, you can actually see that they're uh, in the list like that. So if I double click on this, I can open it up and I can go and um, see that job, that sort of thing. If I go back into the booking diary, uh, I can go and see the actual individual days, that sort of thing. So again, if I just go into um, tomorrow and you'll see that that's now defaulted to the list. So it will keep it as a list or the calendar depending on what you've last set. So in other words, if you're going to run it just as a list and you just want to see it, you don't want to maybe allocate it to specific mechanics, you can do that as well. The other option is, is you don't have to do this at all. So you don't actually have to use the booking diary if you don't want to. Uh, you can just go straight into the job center, just do jobs if you want. Uh, you don't have to book them in, or you can do a mix of both. So you might have people just walk into the shop, um, say, hey, I've got a, you know, a breakdown or, or an emergency repair, that sort of thing. You wouldn't necessarily book those things in. You can just go straight into the job and make that happen. The other really cool thing, if you're a, say, a truck repairer, maybe you repair um, big big pieces of equipment, that sort of thing, and they're typically in your workshop for a long time, what you can do is you can actually click on these this event times and you can actually create a new event or multiple events. So for example, you might have a truck in your workshop for a week or a month for that matter. You can actually go in and put in on a particular date and a particular time at a mechanic and say that they're going to work a certain number of hours for a particular event time so you can have as many event times in this case we've only got one but you can go and create as many event times or, or, or clocking times or booking times if you want to call them that uh, as you like so you know if a, if a vehicle is carried over to the next day you can simply just put in another time for the following day you know those sorts of things so even in a normal mechanical you know car servicing workshop this is great as well and you can just go in and create a new event time so that's a really cool thing about the booking diary as well so the other thing with the booking diary is you've got this monthly view, you've got a weekly view, so you can actually see what's going on on a week by week basis. So if you've got someone on the phone, you can go, "Hey, yeah, I'm I'm pretty free, you know, the, on on a Friday afternoon, I can I can make a booking in there." You can of course have a look at the daily. Uh, if we go to the next day, so that's the what we were looking at before. Again, you've got that calendar look view or a list view for the daily, uh, what you're looking at on a daily basis. So let's now, if we just jump in here and double click on this, and we're going to go and start this job. So let's just pretend now for a second that it's actually the following day. We're going to go open up this job. We're going to click on start job, and it says, do you want to start this job? It's gone and uh, Alec updated that booking so that now it's actually a started booking or a work in progress. And it's gone and put it into your jobs. And you'll notice that the job status now is set to work in progress. It's added in the service and the disc brake service, which were the two items that we've actually added added in. And it's put you know, a quantity in this instance of one hour on each of those things. So what I could do now is I can just simply click this uh, button here, which is allows you to print or email job cards and invoices. And in this instance, I'm going to go off and create a job card. So let's go take a look at what the job card looks like. So this has now got who the customer is, uh, you know, the date, the job card number, you've got an area to enter in the new odometer, you've got all the details about the vehicle. And then you've got the service and you've got the brake service. And in this instance, we've got some predefined notes on both of these things about what's going to go into those particular things. And you've also got a barcode, which is a really cool thing for clocking on and clocking off mechanics. So when you're using the phone app, you can actually use the barcode to actually find this job. And then they just click, you know, find the job, scan the barcode using the camera on the phone. Uh, click start job and then go off and do the work, come back, click stop job and they've ended 
the work on that particular job. So that barcode is a really cool thing as well. And these notes here are general notes. You can edit those uh, in the system settings and you can write whatever you like here. You can write a, a complete terms and conditions. It can be multiple lines, all that sort of stuff. But it is good that you've got some sort of um, you know terms and conditions sort of to, to uh, limit your liability for the work that you're doing on your car. You can get the customer to sign it, for example, uh, that sort of stuff. So that's what the job card looks like. So now that we print that out, uh, the mechanic can now go off and do the work that they've required to do. So let's go and get onto the next stage of the workflow of our work. Okay, so now we've got the job already created. Now it's a, it's a job, it's work in progress. We're going off and going to do the work. The thing that you're going to be in a lot of the time when you're using workshop software is this job center. Now the job center gives you a really good view about what's going on in your workshop. So you can see that you've got things like, you've got the date, you've got the customer, make a model of the vehicle and all that sort of information. You've got the statuses. So in this case, that's work in progress. This is job completed and so on. And you've got the status comment. So a couple of things that you can do here is you can click on the job. Uh, you can double click on it to open it. You can do things like SMS the customer if you wanted to do that sort of thing. Uh, but you can also see what these statuses are and that sort of thing. The You can also just choose a job status. So for example, if you wanted to say, okay, show me the ones that are waiting for parts. So I can then see only those jobs that are waiting for parts or ones that are complete, for example. So these are the jobs that are complete. Or I would as... Probably most of the time you're going to be looking at all the jobs. So as you go through and now you're doing the work and the mechanic goes and clocks on and clocks off the times, if that's what you want to do, uh, we can now come in here and, for example, we're going to go and add our products onto here. So you might want to put in uh, things like a, say you've got a set of disc pads, for example, so you can put the pads on. Uh, you know, you might want to put in a particular air, you know filter onto this uh, job as well but what in this instance we actually don't have this product in the stock file so what we can do is we can go and add the product as well so if we want to go and add it what we can do is we can put in the actual product into the system so uh, we're going to choose a, a supplier for the product um, so we're going to go um, ABC parts store we can put it in a group if we want we're going to set the retail price and the cost was $21 so if we go create this is actually going to go and create that product put it onto the invoice or the job card at this instance but it also adds that air filter into our stock file so it's in our stock now as as a normal product that we can go and buy and sell so once this is done we can then go and save this so you might work on the job as you go along um, you, it's depend, completely dependent on about how you want to operate your workshop. So do you want to come in and as parts get added in, put it, put them on and then save it and go back to the job center, that sort of thing. Or you might do it all at once. That's completely up to you. Okay, so let's pretend now that this invoice is ready to be printed. So what we can do is we can double click on it in the job center. If we use our print and email button here so we can go and either print or email the invoice in this instance I want to show you what it looks like to print it so I'm going to print it off to the screen so what you've got is this would be your logo this is all your company details up the top customer details or the vehicle details so then we've got the labor and the parts and you'll notice here that there are all these notes that are pre-configured for these particular jobs so what I've done is when I've set up these jobs in the job center they are all pre-configured with these particular notes. So I've written them in once and they're going to print out on every single time I use them. I can edit them also on a job-by-job -job basis if I wanted to. Delete them, edit, change, add, whatever I can do. It's completely flexible. Also, just in the layout of the invoice, there's about a half a dozen different types of invoice layouts. So, And there are a number of options on the invoice as well. So you might not want to, for example, print prices. Uh, you can not print the totals if you don't want to. There's a few things that you can do by way of how the invoice is laid out. So it gives you a, a good deal of flexibility. So that's what it looks like. I could print that out if I was going to give it to the customer. But let's just say now that I'm going to now 
finalize this invoice, I'm gonna go and process it. So do I wanna update the date to today's date? I can if I wanted to. You probably would normally do that, to be honest. Um, and I go and process it. And now what I'm gonna do, let's say I wanna email it. I'm gonna email this invoice off to the particular customer that I've got. So this says that it's got this. Uh, that there's, there's a standard set of comments that you can have uh, in your particular message if you want. And you can go and send, you can edit that, of course, if you want, and you can go and send that. So that would then go and send that off to that particular client as an email. Uh, and you can, of course, come back and open up the invoice later and do that as well. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is how to do a quick cash sale. So first up, in the search bar, I'm going to go and search for cash. I've actually got two customers, so I've got cash sale, cash sale trade. Trade guy gets a little bit better discount, but I'm just going to use a normal cash sale. And let's go sell that air filter that uh, we used a little bit earlier on. I'm going to sell that for $38.50. I'm going to go and process that. It says, do you want to process it? Yes, I do. I've taken cash. I'm going to process that and away you go. So it says, would you like to print the invoice? I can yes, print it or not print it, it's up to me, but that's done. So I've actually done that fairly quickly because I wanted to show you how quick and simple it is. That literally took what, 10 seconds? And it is literally that easy to go and do a cash sale for somebody. So simply find the customer, put in the product, click on process, finalize the invoice and the invoice is done. So that now goes into your sales. Of course, it's deducted it from stock and all that sort of stuff. So. There you go, that's an overview of the workflow in workshop software. Uh, so we've gone through things like the booking diary, the job center, how simple it is to do an invoice, emailing the invoice, finalizing the invoice and so on. So again, hope you got great value out of this and all the best with your use of workshop software. Thanks for watching.